Hi, I'm Molly. And I'm Jamie, and this is our From the Pasture with Hired Hand podcast. As the owners of Hired Hand website software, we've been developing websites and creating internet marketing strategies for livestock breeders for the past 10 years. The majority of our customers are involved in the breeding of registered animals, such as Texas longhorn, Highland cattle, horses, and white-tailed deer, where the pedigrees are very important. The From the Pasture with Hired Hand podcast examines many of the differences in raising pedigreed livestock for maximum profit. Join us and learn what we're covering today. Joining us today for another one of our special segments about the Macomb Sales sponsors are Rex and Cherise Glenn Denning. Hi, guys, and thank you for joining us. Hello. Good morning. So this is your um, first year sponsoring the Macomb Sale. Is that right? Uh, yes, it is. Huh? And this year, um, Alan is doing something new and having it for Heifer for Charity. Um, and I believe that's what you're sponsoring. Yes. Yeah, I think that uh, when we first got in the business back in 84, uh, Macomb's did have a Heifer for Charity sale back in the day. And, uh, and I think he's kind of reactivating kind of the... Uh, the old uh, torch bear from back in the eighties, re, kind of redoing it and bringing it back to life. So we're happy to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. What made you want to sponsor the event? Well, we've always red. been red <laughs> and we've always been, you know, really good friends and, and thank the world of red and his operation and he, Charlene and red were kind of the patriarchs of the her of the industry. When we got first got involved and we I always kind of, tried to emulate our program as best we could after his and always uh, he was always uh, searching and looking and trying to uh, improve the breed and and did so for I guess a good 35 or 40 years and and uh, we just have always respected and admired him and we're happy to be a part of the hip security. So why don't you tell us a little bit about the consignments that you have in this year's sale? So the, we're in the heifer, heifer futurity. We have two heifers. There's two classes. There's 2018 class and 2019. In the 2018 class, we have a drag iron daughter. Her name is Dragonette. She's um, a big bodied, beautiful heifer. And then the 2019 class, we have a Rex Chex daughter. Her name is Maggie May. Rex Chex is our bull that's out of um, Cowboy Tough Checks. Perfect. Um, go ahead and tell us a little bit or elaborate a little bit more on how these two heifers are um, good examples of your breeding program and some of the bloodlines that you tend to focus on if they um, also run through those heifers. Well, I think uh, we were fortunate enough to, to purchase drag iron five or six years ago from Daryl Dickinson and use, and he's been our primary herd sire uh, in our, in our breeding program for the last six years. And this heifer kind of, uh, you know, in our opinion is kind of a testament to that breeding program and the drag iron. Uh, he, this heifer's tall, uh, structurally correct, uh, great horns, great color, uh, yeah, we we feel like this heifer is kind of representative of the type of heifer that he's producing for us and the type of replacement cows, heifers, replacement heifers and replacement cows that we're trying to kind of bring this new bloodline of drag iron and Rex checks into to complement our old staple of our herd, herd and our bloodline that we've had for years, which is kind of emblematic of G-Man and Heavy Hitter, and uh, which we were fortunate enough to raise the longest horn bull in the world for 10 years and thought it was kind of easy getting lucky uh, from 97, or excuse me, about 87 to about 97 or 98. And then we were then fortunate enough to catch the wave and get Heavy Hitter, who's the longest horn bull for another 10 years from about 97, 98 to about 2011. And then we were in search for the trifecta and trying to hit the third longest horn bull in the world and couldn't quite get there. So I got on a jet, flew up to Daryl's place and was able to acquire uh, drag iron, which we felt like was a, was the top tier uh, 
I guess in our in our opinion, was a top tier sire in the industry at the time, and we still feel like he carries the torch today. So uh, we've been trying to implement those two bloodlines into our core foundation herd that included a lot of the heavy hitter and G-man lineage in the past. And I do want to mention that Maggie May goes back to Possum Eyes. I don't know if y'all remember Possum Eyes from back in the day, but... Mm, Possum Eyes was a kind of a famous cow. You guys probably weren't born by then, but (laughs) but, she sold for, I think, back in the day, $28,000 $28,000 back in 1983 or 84, which was a lot of money back then. Yeah. And then the market is, we all know, kind of, it's, and it kind of went flush and when it went down and we were able to buy her um, and implement Possumize into our, our program with G-Man and a lot of our standout female production was a, re- was a result of that the combination of that lineage of Possum Eyes and G-Man. Perfect. Um, so some of the sponsors, other sponsors that we've talked to, um, some of their heifers are bred, some are exposed. Are either of yours, um, do you have any breeding status that you want to share with us? Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, Maggie May, we just put her with Buck Wynn. Buck Wynn is a drag iron son and we're real excited about him and He's already had probably about five calves and they're, they're just gorgeous. So she, she actually just got put with him a couple of days ago. And then uh, Dragonette is with a gunslinger son that we call Lawman. And um, so she should have a calf at side when we bring her to the futurity. Maggie May, of course, will not, but she'll be bred. Hopefully she will. I'll get her. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so I know you've mentioned a couple of times, I've heard mention of 84, 85, kind of around that time. Remind us, what was the very first sale that you attended um, at the McCombs Ranch? Do you remember? Oh, boy. I believe that was 84. Uh, he had the Fiesta sale there, and we were very impressed with not only his hospitality and his ex- professional the manner and the way he handled his sale and Alan, first time we met Alan at the time. And of course they were, everybody was a little younger at that day, including myself, but, uh, <laughs> but, you know, it was so cool. Uh, you know, Red was kind of an icon. He is an icon. And he invited us up from the sale of um, the heifer security that Friday up to his personal uh, ranch house. And we sat at his bar and, had a few drinks and heard him tell a few war stories. And I remember telling Sharice at the time that this is the way the long run business should be. Um, if you're going to be in the business and you have people like Red involved that are so, I mean, such wonderful people, wonderful human beings, great business people, and they're raising the top animals in the industry because they love the industry, they love the, they love the cattle, they love the long run breed. And that really was, it really, it really kind of grabbed me. And I always thought that uh, Red's program and the way he ran his operation and the way he looked at the industry was, uh, was a path I wanted to try and follow as best I could. So what's your favorite part about the Macomb sale? Red. Um, yeah, Red, it's hard to be his, Red. Comments, Red. his commentary when he's up there. <laughs> I mean, Red's a hoot and uh, a lot of fun and, and just a good human being. But I mean, the fact that it's kind of they kept it, they've kept it consistent for almost 40 years, 35 or 36 years since we've been going. And, you know, the tent outside with, uh, you know, the folding chairs where it's, you know, real. Uh, long, real cattle sale. It's not, you're not in an air conditioned environment. I mean, I guess three years ago, it was three inches of rain uh, and everybody's boots were three to four inches in water. But the real cowboys were there buying real cows and there wasn't any, well, there, I guess you could say there was some bullshit, but there's no <laughs> bullshit about a sale. I mean, we like the sale because 90% of the time at his sales, if you put something in the auction, it sells. 
you see very few POs. You, uh, it's it's a sale where if you go there with, to buy, you can go out of there with a trailer load of fine cattle, and it's a fair and uh, it's about as good as a Longhorn. In my opinion, it's emblematic of a of the true Texas Longhorn sale with the uh, with the history of the you know you walk around everybody's got dust on their cowboy boots or mud on them or but it's a cool venue and he, he does a great job and has for many, many years. Sharice, we interviewed uh, Mike Davis bef right before you guys. And he mentioned that you and Holly have some uh, special things going to try to make the uh, party and the meal um, nice, even though there's lots of COVID guidelines and restrictions. Do you wanna, uh, is that your favorite part or do you have another favorite part besides the party? I mean, the party's wonderful and we're, we're just delighted to be able to help in any way possible. I think my favorite part is the fact that it's, it's, it's at the ranch, that you're not going to a facility, you know, that you're actually on someone's ranch. And I, 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 like, I like that the most about the sale is that you're at his place, his ranch. You pull in, you see the cows on each side. And you got always got the, the true country and Western band they're just a local yokel country and western band that's kind of give puts you in the mood to spend money and uh as you all know probably the cheapest thing you can do at a, at a longhorn sale is that with the alcohol out before and before and after and during the, the sale it, it's kind of a it's kind of a, a history of of every every time you have a sale there yeah, good food, good camaraderie, good friends, good people, good drink, good people. So it's a it's a social, I guess even in a social distancing world, it's a social venue that everyone can enjoy and see kids running around and you know, dogs and kids and grandkids and and uh, it's real life, real world and the and it's not some prim and proper deal where everybody's in a suit and or a tuxedo or something. That's I mean, we've been to a few of those. Few of those and <laughs> I think the, the first time I really got in trouble was back at this. My wife was when I first time I overspent. There's been many times after that, but it was a South Fork spectacular uh, back in back where they used to film Dallas back in 1985 ish. I think everyone was, was 80, in Texas. Yeah, everybody was in all dressed up, and including ourselves, I guess. And, and I uh, was, I guess we were all a little uh, over in, intoxicated and I went over budget and bought a, bought a cow. I was in trouble all the way home. And ironically, it ended up being the dam of, of uh, G-Man. And so I got out of Hawk pretty quick. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's a, I just like the fact that it's just a true uh, hill country ranch emblematic of, of the industry and the longhorn breed. And, uh, so we, I don't know if that's a little too much, but yeah, that's, that's, that's good. <laughs> Do you have any advice for first-time attendees to the sale? Have fun. Yeah, fun. I think that it's always nice to, you know, walk through uh, a real Longhorn Ranch and look at the cattle, be it Thursday night or Friday night, and then when the sale begins on Saturday, everybody's had an opportunity to really see the cattle and 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 see a real Texas Longhorn Ranch and see how the, the real world uh, takes place. And uh, but it's I think Fox Street said have a good time. Uh, buy some Longhorns. Buy some Longhorns and uh, become addicted like we have been for thirty five or thirty six years. So that's good advice. <laughs> Well, thanks for taking a few minutes out of your day to join us and talk about the Macomb sale. I have, I have one other thing I just need to say. Yeah. We do have three cows that we are selling on Saturday in the sale. That We talked about the heifers, but we didn't talk about the cows. So I just wanted to just kind of mention that we do have yeah. some beautiful, yeah. three beautiful cows. Is, yeah, we've got actually, uh, you're talking about those We have cows. an Iron Mike daughter. Yeah. We have an Iron Mike daughter. Iron Mike was... We, we purchased Iron Mike from Red back about hmm, six or seven years ago. And he was obviously getting older, but we got about four, 
maybe five good, four or five good years out of him. And we've always been impressed with the femininity of the, of the animals. And we, this one heifer that, I don't know if you can see her or not. Go with the flow. Go with the flow. She's kind of got the same coloring of that silver. We, we always call him the silver fox, but he would always throw the silver in the, in the horns and he got so much femininity. So we felt like that, that the Iron Mike went well, goes well with some of the crosses with drag iron and he brings mm-hmm. more femininity out into them and that some of the color, kind of that striking silver type color. So you want to tell him yeah, that? We had to, we had to put him down last week after uh, I guess he was 18 and uh, 17. Okay, well, probably, yeah, but anyway, we had to put him down finally, but uh, he was a he really did a great job for us for at least five years, four to five years. And we've kind of got a lot of good heifers out of him. And I think a lot of replacement cattle, some of, we've really enjoyed seeing the cross with Iron Mike with some of the drag iron progeny. And uh, it's, it's really turned out to be a good, good, good mix. And then we've got a Kingsman daughter that she's, she's gorgeous. And um, she goes back to heavy hitter on the Dan side. And then we have a drag iron daughter. So we've got three cows in, okay, well, in the sale on Saturday. I think they're trying to promote the uh, half of the chitter, So we'll stop yapping. Them. <laughs> oh, no, you're, you're good. I'm glad, I'm glad you brought up the other three. It's supposed to be about all your consignments and everything. So I'm sorry. I, sorry we overlooked them with the. That's the okay. Question. That's okay. No problem. So it's all good. Well, thank you, guys. We appreciate it. Good visiting with you. Yeah, thank you. And we'll see you at the sale. Okay, very good. Thank you.